Good morning. How's everyone doing this morning? I'm happy to see you here. My name is Marion Loveday, and I work here at the Appleton Museum of Art in Ocala. And today we're going to make a clay vase. Uh, we're going to use the slab built method. A couple of examples that I have made. This one is made from air dry clay which you do not need a kiln to fire. You just make it and then it'll just let it dry. This one is an overlapped slab and this is a joined slab, just made from one slab of clay. Now I want to make sure that we're gonna have the right tools for you today. If you're gonna work along with me, you're going to need clay, of course, I'm going to use a regular ceramic clay today. You're going to need a sharp needle type tool. And this is what we use here. But you can use anything that has a nice sharp point. We've even used one of these. Or you can even use a corner of a credit card for a lot of the work we're going to be doing today. You're also going to need something to smooth the clay with. You'll be doing some with your hands, but this is what we used here. It's called a rubber rib or just a good spatula, nice little rubber spatula. And here too, sometimes just an old credit card or little plastic card with rounded corners works as well for that. You're going to need a cardboard cylinder with both ends cut out. Do the Pringles can here, which we made this one with, okay? Or a little Quaker Oats can. Again, you must have the top and bottom. We're gonna use the Pringles can for our work today. Gonna to need a rolling pin to roll out your clay into an even slab a board to roll the clay on. Now this is what we use here. This is just a canvas cover board, but I've used just regular plywood or a piece of drywall, anything with a good surface that the clay won't stick to. You can even use a piece of newspaper over the top of it if you like. You need two pieces of wood. We've got yard sticks or uh, round wooden bells um, for the because the regular ceramic clay, you can roll out a little bit thinner. I just use these that are about a quarter inch thick. And these regulate the thickness of the clay. <laughs> or the paper dry clay tends to be a little bit softer and you'll want a little bit thicker slab. So it will stand up when we start wrapping it around the can. You're also going to need a small cup of water not going to need any more than that. We just dampen things. We don't wet them. A small, smooth sponge. Paper for templates. We're going to make templates that we're going to lay over our slab to cut it out so it's cut out nice and even. So, of course, a pair of scissors. We're going to need some tape as well. A small, stiff paintbrush. A straight edge. Texture. Now, I put as you see here, some texture onto this cylinder. Just using this, just rolling it over the top of it. Today we're gonna to use a doily, which I think these make lovely, lovely bases. But anything you have, or you don't have to do an impression at all. And for when we finish, you're going to need just a thin piece of plastic, like a um, dry cleaner bag, just something like to cover your uh, face as it's drying. Okay, we're gonna start out today making a cylinder shape. Okay, I'm gonna go over briefly the process that we're gonna go through today. And this is pretty much what is on your PowerPoint that you'll be getting. First, we're going to be measuring the length of our cardboard tube then cutting their templates for our clay. We're going to put our template over, template over our tube, which I'll explain in a minute why. 
We'll roll out our slab, add the texture to it, cut out our base, score, and we'll go over that in a minute. We're gonna score the edges of the slab so they'll join properly. We'll dampen the joints, set the tube on the bottom piece, wrap the slab around the tube, join the sides, smooth it out. Then we're going to, when we put it together, we're going to wrap the slab around the tube and we will leave it there until the clay stiffens up. And then when we're done with that, we can put out any other decorations or carvings or anything we want on that. And I have to stand up to do this. And we're going to make our template. We're gonna start by just measuring or two. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of space at the top. So we're gonna, I think I'll make mine about seven and a half inches today. So we're gonna mark that on our paper. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. And we want to know the circumference, the measurements around our two. So what we can do is I'll just put a mark inside the two. That's where we start at the end of the ruler. Roll it. Slippery. Okay, nine and a half inches. So we want this a minimum of nine and a half inches, and we're going to add about an inch or so at the end because we want some overlap, which I can explain later. Just going to okay, is that going to yes, proper overlap? And we're going to cut out both two pieces of paper at the same time. Way. Okay, first piece of paper we're going to wrap around, even with the bottom of the tube. Now, what we're wrap using this paper for is, as I said before, we're going to be wrapping our slab, which is the flat piece of, piece of clay around the tube going to dampen this paper and we don't want it to stick. So we are just kind of using this paper as a release. Don't tape it real tight because this will have to slide off. Okay, so we have that. Now we're going to roll out our slab. And this is kind of a guesstimate and how much clay you're going to use. It depends on what size base you're going to make. And this is just called a wire. This is what we use to cut our clay with. 
I think this will get us all we need. We want to stretch this out. We're not going to make the whole slab this way, but we want to stretch it out. Make it a little easier to roll. Okay, we're just going to start rolling it. Now, clay, when you roll it out, you think it would just keep on rolling out, but you have to reposition it from time to time because it'll quit stretching. Try to roll it evenly. Plenty of clay there. Gonna cut some of that off. Now we've gotten it down a little bit. Okay, again, get rid of some of the excess just to kind of get it out of your way. This is where, now that we're thinner, we're going to use our spacers on the side so we don't go too thin. Now watch that it doesn't, it'll start getting wider. You want to watch that your rolling pin can still touch both sides. So we're going to cut a little more off. They give you an even thickness. These here are about of a quarter of an inch thick. And that way you're not going to have thick and thin spots in your clay. And so when we reach the level of our spacers, which we have, we can remove those. And you can see it's a lovely even slot, even slab there. And you can cut, you don't necessarily need the ruler to cut along here, but it makes it a lot easier. Now I, on this piece, the piece that we're gonna be wrapping around the tube, I like leaving a little length on it because it's easier to have the length and not need it than to be short. Okay, there's our slab. Now we're going to put a texture onto it. You can do that before you uh, cut it as well, because this will stretch out a little bit. This I'm using this doily, it makes a great pattern. Now once you put a pattern on here, you have to handle it a little bit more carefully when you're putting it on the cylinder. You can put you know, impressions on it after you put it on the cylinder, but this, which makes it a little easier as far as handling. <clears throat> this, but this is the method that I prefer. So just roll right over that.
And you want to get a shot of that texture on there. You can see this tool I'm using, it's just a letter opener. So you don't have to, the thing about clay is for this part of it, you don't need a lot of fancy tools. Okay, that is our lovely slab we're going to be using. When you pick them up, I'm going to move it right now. Be very careful and support it as much as you can because we don't want it to stretch. You know, we're going to cut out the base. And I'm just going to use a piece I caught off, cut off earlier. Here's my can. I'm going to make a very slight, just slight impression of the circle of the bottom. Now we're not, not going to cut the circle this exact size. We're going to cut right out. We're going to leave a little space around the circle. So because when we put the slab around the tube, it's going to push it in a little bit. And we don't want, we want to have a little room to work. So when we cut this circle out, we want to hold our needle tool or whatever you're using straight up and down because we want a 90 degree cut on this. No bevel. And say we've got a Say an eighth of an inch edge on it. Okay. Now see what we've got here. Now I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit. I'm using the rubber rib. But you can use your finger. Just kind of clean it up a little bit. Okay, like making things neat. Now, when we join our two pieces, we do what is known as score. And we're gonna score it and then dampen it. What that does, now you can score it with your needle tool. Scoring just makes little marks in it. You can use your letter opener. You can even use a corn holder. You can do it twice as fast. And we also have, this is a rib, but it's called a serrated rib. It has like a sawtooth edge on it. That makes it Easy as well, any of those things will do. So you want to score the edges that are going to be joined. So we've got that done. Now on the slab, we made it a little bit longer. Now, if you want to, you don't even have to cut one in. I didn't cut an end on this. I just lapped it over and stuck it down. Okay, so you can do it that way. And I even left this edge kind of uncut and raw. You can do anything you want. All, you're, all we need to do is make a cylinder. But I kind of like the effect of that one. Now we're gonna take our slab 
and we're going to wrap it around our cardboard. Now, I'm going to wrap it around and then I'm going to cut it even because I said we're going to make a joint that meets like this instead of an overlap. And when you cut it, we're going to cut it at a 45 degree angle because you want as much surface to uh, adhere those two ends together. If you just do it this way, it's not as good as an adherence. Plus here's this way, it's a little bit of an overlap. I'll show you once I've got it on there. And again, that clay likes to stretch. Okay, I'm going to cut right down the middle where it overlaps at an angle. So you have this knife. Forty-five degree angle. Okay, now where's it going to join? That's where we're going to make our joints. And score it. And why are we scoring it? More contact points. You're adding more surface area when you're doing this. I mean, this is a more secure bond than this is. So that's one side. If you're doing this, now you know why we like these. Okay. Then we're going to do one. Just square it up. on the inside of the bottom. Okay, now we're going to make this gooey. Um, what, when we're putting the water on it, I think I mentioned before, what you do not want to do is make it soaking wet because then that'll just make it slimy and sliding around. The thing part right here where time is a little bit of a factor in getting it done because you don't want the water to run off and you want it to be able to stick well. All right, we're not gonna use the sponge to wet it. That's for something else. On the brush, there we go. If you just feel it, you can tell if it's too slippery, slidey, or when it starts getting gooey, that gooey is what we want. You can even, Use your finger if you want. You don't want to erase your score marks. You can still see them on here. And you can re-wet it as we go along in the process too. So 
See, it's kind of gooey there. And once you start putting it together, constructing it, if it doesn't stick, you can add a little bit more water. Okay. Now when we put the tube on here, this has a little bit of a rim on it, so you don't want that at the bottom. You want this end on the bottom. And you don't really want to push it into the clay. Just set it on there. The reason we use a tube will help support your clay. First time I made one out of air dry clay, we had a wet batch and I put it on the thing and it just slumped right down. That's why we suggest, I suggest the thickness of about three eighths inch thick for the air dry clay if you get some that's, that's pretty soft. But like I said, you can roll it out and let the slab dry for a little while and um, it'll stiffen up. It goes towards what we call leather hard, just like a thick piece of leather that it's still soft enough to manipulate, but it doesn't crack. And that's just something you have kind of have to get a feel for whatever works. Center that. And all this happens pretty quickly here. Make sure you got your scored in there. Just going to get it towards you. Okay, just wrap it right around. Now, we can manipulate this clay a lot and sometimes, like usually, the clay will have stretched and it won't fit neatly around here, but that's okay. We can fix that. Okay, we got it around here. See, it's not very even. But we can, if you take both your hands, you're basically kind of doing, a, you're shrinking it back to fit. Here's our joint. We want to make sure that is stuck. This one's sticking pretty good today. Okay, this part is where it's, you just want it to fit it to that can. See the can still moves. Pull the paper up a little, pull it up a little bit, and make sure it's not in our joint. Push the bottom in. Try not to have a leaning tower of pizza, which likes to happen. Now we're going to take, I'll say smoother spatula. And this is going to, at a slight angle, Push that, and you're pushing it right into the bottom. Now I'm going to pick this up. This is kind of a scary thing to do at this point because it can come apart. But see, what we're doing is smoothing that joint together, and we'll smooth out the bottom later. So now I'm just kind of smoothing this here. Because when you're smooth it, it's not just to make it pretty, it's to get it well joined. Now we will leave this tube in there until this is stiff enough to hold itself up without sinking. It still needs to be 
and collapsing. If you look on this one, I let this one collapse because it was kind of a relaxed kind of vase anyway, but that's, it'll collapse there. Now that tube, again, this is the kind of thing you don't really want to leave for hours or overnight like this because all clays, air dry and regular ceramic clay shrink when they dry. They can shrink from 10 to 15%. Now, last night, let's see, I did this one yesterday afternoon and I left it overnight just to show you something. So this one I did yesterday, put some nice embellishments on it and left the can in. And this is what happened. Now I also have this on it because what happens when it shrunk, now I, this was a little bit loose when I put it on there that I could still get the can out, but I can no longer get the can out. The appliques I put on it, it shrunk away from and cracked in half, 12 hours tops. So that got to make sure you get that out. And I really like that, but I knew, but I did this for a reason. Okay. So we got that. Make sure it's where we want it. Okay, now we're going to really get into the fine part of cleaning it up. I personally like the lace because it can one cover a multitude of uh, ills if there's cracks or in the clay or anything, and it just it's just a lovely random pattern. Okay, now also, we have this seam here. Okay, now this for an extra smoothing. This is a slightly damp sponge, slightly damp sponge. And that'll clean that up real nice. Okay, now this one is a little bit soft, so we're gonna leave it to rest for a little bit. This one actually I made a week or so ago, two weeks ago, I think. And I left it covered in plastic. So it stiffened up to where it's easier to handle. But it's still, if you can see this, get a little closer to see it. It still has, I'm going to try real hard not to break it. It still has a little bit of flexibility in it. Okay. Which means we can carve on it if you will. Now I'm going to kind of butcher this one just so you can see what you can do. Even just an exacto knife. I mean, it just, it's like cutting soap. It's just a beautiful thing to work with. So you could even make a luminary, something you want to put a candle in. Okay. At this point, it really won't accept stamps as far as putting impressions in it but it's a joy to carve, just carves really cleanly. If, hopefully you're a better carver than I am. If it's too stiff and you put a blade or something into it, it's gonna push it apart and it'll cry. Um, see this, this just dried overnight without being covered. What was, took 12 hours, I guess, because I got here this morning and it was cracked. And it'll carve a little bit, but also if you push it, it cracks and breaks. All of, when you let something dry or let the clay dry, you have to keep in mind that, that the bottom is gonna be the last to dry, which means it is, the top is going to shrink more than the bottom will because your bottom doesn't have the airflow around it. 
Okay, now the surface, you, you want to have a, uh, a surface like plywood or drywall or something to put it on because that will pull some that moisture out of it. If it does not dry evenly, again, we get the cracks. This part, thinner, exposed to more air, shrinks more, which means it can separate and it happens a lot. Initially, what I like to do is I, plastic like this, make sure it doesn't have holes. It's a wonderful, oh, it's a wonderful thing. What I initially do is I'll put it completely surrounded. Say for a day or two. But this we just, oh, you don't want it. You're not going to put a rubber band around it. You want a little bit of air inside that bag so it will dry evenly. Remember, we put the plastic on the bottom for the first day or two just for it to kind of settle in. Then, after a day or so, I will take the vase and just put the plastic over it. And you can, so it can get some air in there, but you've got this top covered. And remember, what's the first thing to dry is gonna be this top that's exposed. This, but again, that's the first thing to dry. And then, you know, again, this is a long process. And then maybe the next day or so, you can start making it a little bit looser. The, the big thing is just to keep it from drying. It's evenness. If you've got an area that's thicker, it's going to retain more moisture. It won't shrink as fast, and that's when it separates. That's the thing you've got to remember when you're working with the clay. If you want to use the vase as an actual vase and put, like, fresh flowers in it, being a Pepsi drinker, something handy, just put a plastic liner in it or if you cut that down, just put a plastic liner in it if you want to. I've read the instructions with the clay. I think I mentioned that before, that if you let it dry hard, you know, and put a nice coating on it, you can put water in it. I personally wouldn't do it for the air dry clay. Stage, like I said, this stands on its own now, but I'm gonna be doing some work on it and I want to have a backing because I'm going to be pushing on it. And I'm just going to make some little appliques here out of my scrap, which I have in abundance. Now this, for doing this, I'm an applique is just a, basically we're making a clay decal to go on it. Because there's a lot of surface treatments you can do. So I'm not going to worry here about how even the thickness is. And I like to smooth mine out. You can take whatever smoothing device you have and just gently go over it. My lace that I like so much. And let's see, put a nice little flower on it. And these you can kind of put as thin as you want. You see that? And I'm just going to cut out around that pattern. And we're not going to completely finish and paint and everything these today, but I will go through it with you because that's more of an individual thing. Let's smooth those edges a little bit. <laughs> Here we go. 
Now, these are nice, well, wherever you want to put them, but if you've got a seam that you're not real happy with, in the interest of time, I'll just do it with this. It says, as long as your clay is pretty reasonably stable at this point, you can move it around a little bit because any little dings or anything you put in it are pretty easily fixed because it's still sticky. This is pretty much the same thing as I did to make the buttons. Just cut them out and stick them on. Okay. And kind of press it down. Just nice little decorations and it could be anything. You could make cookie cutouts and put on it. So we have appliques. We could even I like a little put a little edge like that on it. Now this, because I'm pushing down on it a lot, I'm leaving the can in because the pressure is gonna distort it. Now these are things, like I said, your vase is pretty much made at this point. These are just kind of little embellishments you can do. Make a coil. You know, tie a little rope around here. This is a very crude version. You can make flat pieces. I just have, this is what I made my button with. I love the button. Now the button, if you want like those, all that was, I cut that out. Put your little buttonholes in it. Okay, then I made thread. Just a little piece like that. So there's my piece of thread. It's better. Smooth it out a little bit. We're not going for artistic here. I'm just sticking a bunch of things on here to show you options that you can use. You are the artist when it comes to that, however you want it to look. And there's your little button. You could do a Ripple effect. Clean the edge up a little bit. See, at this point, you can you can erase a lot of mistakes just with that slightly damp sponge and a little squeeze. Again, this is when we love clay. Just do a ripple like your those of you that make pies. I kind of went through the drying process. Okay, like I said, this one has been, I made it two or three weeks ago. But there was a just, just enough air in there to stiffen it, but not enough to make it completely dry. So right now we're just going to see we just finished this. And again, make sure your plastic, it's a lighter plastic. The, the uh, Real thin trash bags. Because it's, it's real heavy, it's 
you know, you're wet and it's real heavy, it's going to push your sides in or ding it. So you just very gently wrap it. Make sure you don't have to wrap the sides completely around it. You can just weight it. You want some air in there, uh, unless you're going to, unless you're done working with it for the day and you say, I'm not going to have time to finish this now, then completely cover it and get out as much air as you can. For the first, two, first couple of days, just make sure the whole thing is wrapped. And again, I would suggest you put it on a somewhat porous surface. Then, after a couple of days, you can put it like that, and then lightly cover it. Bottom's not covered now, so it's going to dry a little bit more. Again, you can still wait. It. The, the, as slow as you can stand it is the best way to dry. I can be a little bit impatient sometimes, but this will teach you to be patient. Okay, so that's going to be our second step. And now I even go finally and kind of loosen that. You've got plenty of air in there. And the reason I'm going so gradually with this again, this is thinner. It's going to dry fast. It's going to be smaller than this. It will sh can shrink up to 15% or even more. Each clay is a little bit different. When it shrinks, it separates. Okay. So this, this bottom will be more flexible. So if I want to save this, even still, I'm going to drape it loosely. And again, depending on your environment, it's going to take about a week. A lot of it's just feel and, you know, because there's different ways, you know, there's just different circumstances, different kinds of clay, different, whether you're air conditioned, whether you're outside, it's all a little bit different. But just be patient and slow with, like says, so give each stage a couple of days. And finally, you're going to come to this. This one ceramic, this you would fire. Now, if you put a coating on it, it's not going to dry. The coating will probably separate on it. I used an Amico sealant. Um, the, as far as what you can do with the clay, there's lots of different air dry clays. I'm not familiar with all of them. Your best bet uh, is to go with your manufacturer's directions on it. They give you a pretty broad range of what you can do with it. Seal the inside, seal the outside. I believe I put two coats on it. Yeah. And no way endorsing this, this is just what I used. But the, the main thing is the you want a sealant that will stick. You could, what you can do also, and I, when I work with a new clay or something, I make a bunch of test pieces and I can test my finishes before I put it, put it on my finished piece. I can try out paint on them. I can try out varnishes on them. That's, that can be, because you're always gonna have some scrap. Just let that scrap dry and see what works on it before you mess up that beautiful work of art you just made. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye, thank you for coming.